Hello, folks. <laughs> Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I'm your host for the evening, the Gritty Broman, and I'm joined by none other than our infamous intern. Intern Brad. Intern Brad. You like that name? I do. Yeah? It sticks. Yeah, I uh, I said it as a joke one time to Brian, <laughs> and it just kind of, it stuck. I yeah, like it. I actually, I was at, I think it was Costa Vida a couple weeks ago, and I actually had one person came up and was like, hey, are you intern Brad? <laughs> And I'm like, I am actually, you know, we talked for a minute and stuff. It's pretty funny because kid from nowhere oh, and awesome. he came up. Yeah, this is pretty funny. I, I'll get recognized, but only like at like sportsman's or something. Oh, like yeah. That, you know, that's about it. Yeah, I don't, I don't get too recognized. I'm not that's big funny, like, though. I'm not big like Grittier or the Gritty Broman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, this podcast is uh, a podcast Brian shot with our good buddy, Dwayne Sessions. Uh, Dwayne is, how do you describe Dwayne? See, and I don't know Dwayne that well. You don't? I don't. You haven't met Dwayne. Mm-mm, That's I haven't met weird Dwayne. To me. nope. Dwayne is like, genuinely reminds me of Gimli. <laughs> and not just because like, like I looked at it, it's that attitude. Like oh yeah. He's got that like, oh, no, he, he's sarcastic. Sarcastic. He's super sarcastic. Like, he he doesn't pull any punches, especially for Brian. <laughs> and that's kind of what this podcast, in fact, is about. They went on a late season rifle hunt, and there was snow everywhere. Yep. And Dwayne Dwayne actually is a guide. He's he guides a little bit, and but he's also he's not the most. I, I don't want to. He's not the most fit. Person. Right. Right. Well, I think he's fit, but he's not like Brian crazy fit uh-huh. you know what i mean like brian's in that next level of fitness like i want to be fit but i don't think i ever want to be brian call fit <laughs> too much time too much effort i'm happy i'd like to be more fit than i am now right and i think that's uh Dwayne. Dwayne knew what he was getting in for he knew what he was signing up for when he agreed to go on a hunt with brian yeah i watched some of the footage and and it looks nasty it looks nasty <laughs> it looks fun yeah but- at least it was sunny. They didn't have any storms that hit them. Yeah. It basically dumped like two or three days before they got there. Yeah. And then so they just had, I don't know, how much snow do you think there was? I bet there was eight, ten inches yeah. up higher was probably closer to a foot, I bet. Uh, they, at some point when they were hiking, it was getting up to their knees. Yeah. I know that much. But I don't think it was that way the whole way. But long story short, Brian and Dwayne talk about that hunt. <laughs> Kind of what their expectations going in there were, uh, how Dwayne felt about the hunt, <laughs> you know, uh, all good stuff. And then kind of the last half of the podcast, they talk about gear, um, gear that they took on this late season hunt, what they thought was good, what they thought was bad, things that they would change. So if you're into gear, listen to that last 30 minutes. This is for you guys. Um, one of the pieces of gear that they actually talked about were trekking poles, uh, Brian broke his trekking poles on this trip. He stepped on them. I don't know. Did Brian tell you about that? He did. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So, and he, I think he said he's ordered lowers, more lowers. Yeah. Because he wants to glue on the rubbers, and so I've been running the sissy sticks as well all fall and love them. Um, but I've had the same thing. The rubbers, you get into any mud or anything like that, and the rubbers come off. Mm-hmm. I lost both but, my rubbers in one day. But. Yeah, technically, technically, I didn't lose them. So my buddy, we went on a hunt early in a, in Never a September. Loaned Never loaned gear. And he's a little out of shape. And I told him about a month or two before, hey, if you want to come with us, my dad and I, you need to get in shape. Well, he said he ran a mile one day, and that was it. <laughs> he 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 was done after that one mile. So we uh, we went in there, and it's it's a brutal hike because you you park the truck at about 5,700 feet and the top of the peak where we got to is about 9,600 feet. And from the truck all the way up, you, you, you pull. And so coming out, he was dog tired. And so he used my trekking poles for most of it. Yeah. And I was, that was the first time I'd used them. I could, with the, with the exception of being on the hunt with Brian and, and, and cousin Ben. But so he was using my trekking poles and the whole time he was falling down, tripping, and I'm like, don't break oh. my poles. Don't break my poles. But they, they're they awesome. Yeah, I love them. Uh, if you want, folks, you can go to sissy6.com or bigsissygear.com, and you can get 15% off a pair of your own trekking poles. Uh, we also have a, a discount going on right now with Mountain Ops. Type in code GRITTY yep. at Mountain Ops to receive free shipping. 
And this one's cool. So from now until the end of the year, you can receive 10% off your order at Heather's Choice. Heather's Choice. Yes. Get some packaroons. Dude, packaroons are my favorite. Stocking stuffers. Yes. Maybe you don't have any more hunts planned for the year, but everybody knows somebody who could use a pack of room. Mm-hmm. Actually, Brian and I, you hand me that. Uh, Brian and I were going through a bunch of his old camping gear trying to figure out what he's going to keep, and we came across these beauties. Uh-huh. I don't know for you, that those folks at home, if you can see these, but these are the OG Heather's Choice. We got these, I think, at a... BHA Summit or something like that. Oh, yeah. In like 2015 when we first met Heather. It's cool having these. We need to put these up somewhere. Yeah. Put like a little shadow box. They're definitely not good to eat by the expiration date. No. (laughs) No. Probably not. But if you guys want, you can get 10% off. Type in code GRITTY at checkout. Yep. And with that, Brad, on to the show. On to the show. Welcome to the Gritty Podcast. I am your host, Brian Call, and today's guest is Dwayne The Rock Sessions. <laughs> I don't remember who who came up with that. Was it, I think, was it Jordan? I think Jordan's one that Probably. started calling me that first. Probably. <clears throat> I don't know. It's been there a long time. Yeah. Dwayne is is uh, th- also a 303 Trophy Husband on Instagram. Yeah. 303 Trophy Husband. Yeah. Uh, Dwayne and I have been friends for a long time. We met in Colorado when I moved there for first off going to church together. Yeah. Uh, first time I saw Dwayne's big ginger beard sticking out, you know, and he's <laughs> like, Hey, and, uh, he was it, it instantly like a, um, it kindred actually, spirit. Yeah. It, it was kind of, it was, it was weird because there, there, there was a guy there at church. that was like, Hey, you need to, there's this new guy. You need to meet him. He, he really likes to hunt. And, <laughs> You know, I, I, I get that all the time. Right. And, and I'm like, oh, yeah, sure. I bet, you know, and, <laughs> and, uh, he kind of introduced me to you and, you know, I was like, oh, you know, and you're like, yeah, I, I, I do this podcast, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I've never heard of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and yeah, we're, we're, you know, you live in right there, uh, almost. Right, out, right outside of Evergreen. Yeah, <clears throat> pretty close. I, I was Indian like, Hills. It was like fifteen minutes from your house. And not only are we close friends, but our kids are friends with each other, and our wives, and just our families did a lot together. When yeah. I lived in Colorado for a couple of years, we just went on an elk hunt here in Colorado, and we're going to talk about that today. That's the subject of today's podcast. I want to get into that. Uh, you know, I've done a lot of backpack hunting, a lot of you know, trying to get remote, trying to kill, you know, older animal when you get away from the crowds. And I just like that experience more than, you know, road hunting or sitting in a tree stand or that kind of thing. Each of them have, has their pros and cons. Though. Yes. And, uh, but one thing I take for granted maybe is I'm so used to doing this that I, I don't even really think about some of the stuff that we do. Right. It's just, you, we do it all the time. But on this one, I drag you out into you know the, the woods. Yeah, I, I've I've never even thought about backpack hunting in you know this late. Yeah, and so yeah, it was it was definitely. I, I want to get your perspective on it because you and I hunted. <clears throat> our first hunt we really did together was with the kids. We yeah. went out a few times with the kids, youth rifle hunt in Colorado, and it was fun. Yep. Kids didn't actually tag out, but we they got missed. out. Yep, they had their chances, <laughs> as kids do. And then, um, you know, we stayed in a nice cabin and yeah. all of that. Then you and I went in, uh, it was October basically 1st through the 5th or something like yeah. that in Montana. Yeah, last year. Last year, we archery hunted. I had three, two and a half days, really, to tag out. And, man, we were into elk. I mean, I almost tagged. I was this close over and over. over. I called it. Bull into like three feet of Dwayne, and somehow he blew it. Wasn't, it. it wasn't three. It wasn't okay. three feet. It was five. No, it was like it was probably like a foot and a half. He almost <laughs> stepped on me. I will never forgive you for that either. I know that's I, been that's been the subject. I, I remember you talking to. I, I remember Chad Mendez. You talked mm-hmm, to about mm-hmm. it. You. It was uh, with Jason Phelps and oh, Nick Schmidt. I can't recall. There was another time. You know, and I'm going this whole time. I have no chance to. to Here's your chance to defend, to defend yourself. Myself. 
So I'm set up. You, By the way, before you tell the story, you went back there this year and in full redemption style. Yes. You, yeah, you for got sure. archery, bull. Elk. I was not. I I was set up. I got I got myself set up so that there was no way there was anything in front of me <laughs> in an elk, in, in, unless it came behind lesson, me. Lesson learned. So you were with Casey Harbertson this year. He called yeah. the bull right into your lap, and yeah, you it was him. oh so awesome. And you know, Casey's got that all on video. I I put a little bit of it on Instagram here mm-hmm. and there. Uh, you know, I'm not really. But let's rewind to. Your epic failure with me, where I call the bull into your lap as well, like right into my lap. It was, it was snow. Yep. It, but it, but it was. I mean, it was. It was. It was just. It was such a perfect. You know, we had we we got on those tracks first thing in the morning. You know, we saw we saw the herd first thing in the morning. We got up there on top uh, into that saddle. You know, and, and saw right mm-hmm. where they dropped down in the timber, and we dropped down in there probably like sixty yards into that timber line. You know, Brian's like, "Go set up over here. I'm gonna get back here and call." Well, we soft cow called as yep. we followed the tracks because that one, that one, we didn't know how far away they were, and and then they they sounded off when we got within yep. probably two hundred, two hundred fifty yards yeah. or something like that. So we knew, okay, they're right below us. So that's when we set up. Yep. And uh, the first spot I set up, it was actually, it was pretty good, but I, I'm like in the wide open and I'm going, all right. And I ha- I haven't had that much experience ar- archery elk hunting. Right. This is like one of the first. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I've guided and I, and I, and I made some of the same mistakes that, that, that I got on hunters for too. Yeah. But I'd never killed one with my bow. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd guided hunters into them, but I'd, but I'd never yeah. done it myself. And, and, uh, I'm, I'm set up and, and. And you start calling, and I and I hear that bull bugle, and I'm like, well, if he come if he comes straight up this hill, you know, he's gonna, I, I won't have a shot. And so I moved over, and what I didn't pay attention to is this little pine tree in front of me, <laughs> and I kind of discounted it because I was looking, you know, there were a couple of trails there, and neither one of them came by that pine tree. Mm-hmm. And you know, I'm listening to that one, and I just, I, I caught, I heard just a little, you know, like a, like a hoof you know, get hit in a log or something. And I, and I caught some movement out of the corner of my eye and that elk was there. There was one coming right back up that trail, you know? And so I, I got ready and I'm like, well, if he, if he stays on that trail, he's on, he's going to turn uphill from me. It was like 15 yards and I'm mm-hmm. going, this is perfect. <clears throat> so I drew and I'm and and I drew and I'm, and I'm ready. And he just keeps coming straight at that pine tree came right around it, almost stepped on my foot. And, you know, and, and, and I had that, hin- I was shooting the hinge that year too. How cool was it though, having an elk oh, that was close? So awesome. He, you know, he never made a sound, but it was still, I mean, <clears throat> he was. Snow. It was just yeah. quiet in the snow. And he, and he walked right past me and he's walking straight away from me. And I still, you know, I've got him all the way out to 25 yards, but right up his butt. And I'm going, I don't. I would, I just wasn't comfortable with that shot. And mm-hmm. then he turned up into some, into a little, st- uh, strip of timber between you and me. And I kind of stepped around that and I'm waiting again. I, I, th- I think it was, it was like 20, 25 yards. Yeah. And all he had to do was take one more step, but then he, you know, he saw that there wasn't a cow up there. He could hear, you know, he could hear you up there. You know, basically what you're saying is a better archer would have tagged out. Yeah, or somebody, or or even somebody that was back behind me calling that had their bow in their, you know, within reach. <laughs> so I'm up there breaking and rubbing that's this Brian, tree. That's what Brian. That's what Brian. That's what Brian fa- fails to to include in this in this story is the fact that his bow was like 15 feet away from him on the ground. I had been, you know, making all sorts of herd noise, yeah. raking trees, bugling, screaming, cow calling, <clears throat> little bit asterisk. And I had my bow like right next to me. And every time I went to a new tree, I'd pick the bow up, carry it with yep. me. So I had it right there just in case. You never know. Maybe it, uh, it approaches from above or below, you know, a different spot. Now, we anticipated they'd come up the same trail they went down. The last thought was that it would come right past me to you. Yeah, that I wasn't paying <laughs> attention to. So I was looking up and to the left wherever Dwayne wasn't because I didn't think a bull would get past <laughs> Dwayne. But sure enough, I had just picked up this big log and walked like eight feet from my bow and just started just raking this tree hard. I looked to my left and there is a 
bull elk just bebopping his way right up the trail yeah, straight to just, me. I mean, just he's, chill as could be, he's bebopping along, just all cheerful, bouncing through the trees. Yeah. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang out with the herd. Walked right past me. You know, I he he even he had to have seen me move even because because I'm at full draw and he keeps coming. You were a and, foot and a half, and and oh, he yeah. didn't like sense you or no. No, nothing. He was, I mean, he was in the zone. And, it, and then he bebops right to me, and I'm looking at him, and he's not even looking up. He's not even looking to where this huge no. herd should be. Yeah. And I'm raking a tree. He's just like, he's just under the assumption that he's just joining the crowd. Yep. And his head's down, he's looking down, and I'm like, I look at my bow, and I look at him, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And I'm doing the math going, uh, how do you get past Dwayne? Yeah. Like, how is he where's, right here? Where's Dwayne? <laughs> where's Dwayne? <clears throat> and I, and I thought, well, Dwayne's going to shoot him any minute. He's going to shoot him any minute and nothing, nothing, yeah. nothing. And the bull stops and didn't bebop some more. And I'm just stuck there. And I'm like, well, he's not even paying attention. Maybe I can get, the maybe line. I can ease down to the bow. <laughs> so I, I, I actually put the stick down and as he's just trotting, kind of looking around, he looks behind him. He's just moving up the hill. I closed the, like three feet of the bow. It was almost to the bow. And he never saw me. He just picks his head up and looks around and all of a sudden. Nobody there. And he's like, wait, there should be like a whole herd here. And he looks and he looks and he can't see a single elk. Doesn't lock yeah. eyes on me. Doesn't no. even see me. He just doesn't see any elk. And he's like. Red flags. Yep. And that, and was, he just, that was right where he was in that lit. It was just this little strip of timber that I couldn't shoot through. Yeah. And he's, and he, and he stops. He's kind of, and he, <clears> and he <throat> sits there for a second and he's like, he goes, yeah. And then he just, he whirled and took off out of there. He was gone. Brian comes down to me. He's like, <laughs> what happened, dummy? <laughs> you know, and I'm like, screw you, man. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, there were, there was a string of, uh, salty words and spewed and, and, uh, and you were but, upset, but we still had that other bull bugle and he yeah. sounded like, he sounded like a big bull. And so we kept, we got within 80, 90 yards of him multiple well, I think, times. I think you were I think, multiple bulls. Oh, there yeah. were bulls everywhere. Oh yeah. And so contrast with this year, how did you play it different when Casey, cause Casey was behind you calling. I saw the video. Yep. Well, I mean, actually right be, <laughs> before that video, I mean, I got, we, we got nailed by. You'd have killed that bull, by the way, if you hadn't have hidden behind a tree. Oh yeah, you, you know. Yeah, and I, I if I, I, I expressly I was... before I left you, I said, "Yep, don't hide behind a tree. Make sure that you just stand in front of a tree because you can't shoot through." Yep, and then you did the exact thing I told you not yep. to do. Well, I, you know, and like, well, like I said, I thought I thought that that bull in the bottom was gonna, that yeah, was bugling was gonna well, come the thing back. Is, to is I've done that many times, and it's instinct. It, it, we just human beings we feel like we need to hide behind something mm -hmm. but we have different eyes different senses than a elk does they really really lock on to movement and see movement humans see everything we have very very high ocular senses our eyes yeah. can see things that deer and elk can't see uh, most predators can see things that that ungulates can't see so when you're standing in front of a bush and you got your camel on and it's kind of breaking you up, they just don't see it. They just see the movement. You can stand in the wide open and they just don't see you. Yeah. Where that'll, you know, from our perspective, there's that just doesn't seem normal. Like anybody walking up that trail would see you standing in front of a bush. But yeah, you gotta you gotta realize these animals are not humans. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it was but this year. And, you know, and, and, you know, Casey, I, I'd like to hear Casey's, we didn't really talk a whole lot about it. Mm -hmm. I'd like to hear his perspective on it and maybe, you know, maybe we can get into that at a later date, but, but, uh, you know, I got busted by, by a five point. He was a decent five point 10 minutes before I shot that bull. Oh, really? He came, <clears throat> we're, we're cruising along there and we're, I mean, Casey and I had at least six different bulls bugling at us and, uh. We're cruising along. We're kind of chasing the herd, you know, trying to cut them off. They're coming uphill, and we're we're side hilling into them. Mm -hmm. Well, all of a sudden, one just rips off a bugle right above us, you know, and he's just over the crest of this rise. And so I I run up to get around in front of this tree, and I'm like, all right, I'm gonna make 
freaking sure I'm in front of this tree this time. Instead of behind it. And right as I step around that tree, he peeks over the top of that crest. And and I look up at him right as he looks down, down at me. And he didn't freak out. He just he was just like, yeah, that's not an elk. And he turned and just and just you Went know on and moved on and ran back down to Casey. I'm like, yeah, I, I just got busted. And and he's like, oh dang, you know. Well, you know these ones are still bugling. Well, we got we you know we get over and get set up and uh, you know we, we can hear the cows mewing and stuff. I mean, we're right inside that bubble. I'm man, I I made sure that there was nothing in front of me <laughs> for. I mean, I had. I had probably 50 yards I could have made a shot. Yeah. And uh, you were well out in front of oh, the trees. Oh, yeah. And mm-hmm. I, I, I mean, kinda I was. in the wide open. Yeah, really I was. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I just kind of got down and crouched down. And, and you know, there was there were elk all over the place. And and uh, he just started. I mean, it was just, just Casey had him coming in on a string. And it was just it set up perfect 20 yards and, and drilled him. And, you know, yeah. it was. Yeah, I mean, but the other thing I did too is I'm, I shot, I shot a ton. Um, got way more f- com- comfortable with your bow. Yeah, did a lot was, with alpha bow hunting. Yeah, you no know, limits archery. I, Phil I, I Mendoza. Worked, I worked for Phil this summer with the alpha and, and 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 those guys down there. You know, Jason and Bo and Braden. I spent hours down there with those guys. Just um, you know, and I've, I I feel like that that my form and everything. I've got a little bit of all of of all those guys. You know, mm-hmm. in my shot process and everything, and the toolkit, and it, you know, I just, I just, I'm just, <clears throat> I'm just super comfortable that it, that you know, when that when the adrenaline gets going now, that I that I'm going to be able to make that shot, and you know, I just, man, find a shop that that those guys are willing to spend yep. that kind of time with you. It's hard to do, but like this weekend, we <clears throat> we we were out hunting, and we actually watched two young boys. Just blow it, yeah. Just blow it. They come yeah. on a herd. We got we we were not. We decided we weren't going to take anything out of that herd. There wasn't a bull big enough for what we wanted. This is late season rifle, and uh, these two boys sneak up on this herd and they shoot too soon, too early, too, too rushed, too far. Everything that a rookie, like a young but, man, we I I've been. We've there. all been there. Oh man. Well and. And you know that age, you know, I, you know, you're 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 looking at them, and 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 uh, you know, you're just in in the the dejected, you know, they're just they're plodding through the snow, like you know, going up and doing their due diligence to make Try sure to they find didn't blood. Make, and you and I are watching, like, there's no possible way, yeah, you would miss a bull on this, you know, rifle. We, like we 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 were up on multiple herds all week, all week, and we just uh, sat there waiting for a big bull to come every, out it, from from everywhere from from thirty yards to we had bulls at thirty yards all the way out to four hundred yards, and mm-hmm. you know which is all within our wheelhouse. But you know those those young kids, it was you know it just it, it brought back memories. Oh, same here. I can remember. <clears throat> Firing four shots at an yeah. elk. Well, and having no idea what the distance is either, because I guarantee you they didn't have a range finder. I, they didn't seem to have optics. <laughs> they may so, not. These, well, they they came in on horseback. They probably it was probably like a thirty thirty, you know, with yeah, the saddle ring on I, it. And, yeah, which is great. You know, that'd be well, awesome. But I watched him shoot. That doesn't really work. From you know what were what we figure they were like five hundred. Yeah, at least four fifty five hundred yeah. somewhere in there. <clears throat> they were. They were, we watched them for about an hour afterward and they were looking and looking and looking. Dejected. And this was, and it just, it, they started out, you know, they were like, <laughs> we got an elk. Yeah. And then they, and then, the, and then, you know, there's nothing. They there take their hats off. They throw them yeah. on the ground. Yeah. They're kicking snow and they're just, just, and then yeah. they're just moping along. And, but, you know, buck fever is a thing. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And you get there and you black out, you yeah. know, and it's especially true with archery. I think there's a lot less you can get away with with archery. Yeah, when you're in those close quarters, it's a totally different ball game, man. And you know, and and I, I you know, there there was even, you know, when I first started archery hunting, I, I hunted. I, I didn't grow up archery hunting, right? I picked it up, you know, years ago when I when we moved to Oklahoma, and I had a buddy that was like, "Here, try this bow," you know, and and uh, but I remember. You know that first time out in the woods, having a little white-tailed doe walk by, and 
you know, and, and the adrenaline just starts pumping and I pull back and, and like close my right eye, you know, and, and I'm like, what, what's going, what, what's going on? You know, I can't see through my mm-hmm. peep and he's like, well, you're, the wrong eyes closed, dummy. Well, it's funny when I moved to Colorado and, and you're like, you know, I, I, I'd like to try archer hunting and get back into it. So, so yep. we, uh, introduce you to the guys down at no limits yep. and we start shooting together. You had every classic bad Oh, yeah. shooting yeah. habit on the planet. Yep, I remember. You, you had the, you know, I bought my bow at Cabela's. I have my trigger release. I have crappy arrows. Nothing's tuned. And you're just like, Nothing. I, you're just drive by timing, snap, punching yep, the trigger. I think I even had, I think I even had like two or three different types of arrows in my quiver. Mm-hmm. And I remember going out to, to Bear Creek Lake that day with you guys. And, you know, and, and you guys are like, you know, 70, 80 yards. And, and, uh, you're like, you know, there was nothing short, and, I'm, and so I'm sitting there, and you're like, shoot the 50-yard target. And, you know, and so I I get up there, and, you know, throw, and arrow gone. And you guys are like, put your stuff away. <laughs> Seriously, uh, you know, the you you had such a tight grip on yep. the bow. You were you cho- choking it with the with the bow arm. Yep. And then your, your trigger, and you would just kind of try to force it there, and then go boom, and yep. slam it. And then you put a lot of uh, shot input, you know, like anxiety into yep. the shot before you even before the string even released, and you were all over the place. Yeah. Oh yeah. Couldn't hit anything, and so it was really discouraging for you too because you're like, this archery thing, I don't get it. But then we put a hinge in your hand. Oh, that was a fun day because <laughs> I give Dwayne here, a hinge. Here, release. try this. <laughs> and I don't want him to punch himself in the face. So I give you, I think I give you the sweet spot that has the, the, the lock. The, the good, the good news is, is I'm not the only one that's ever, you know, somehow the, Dwayne launches an arrow into the rafters oh, man. At, at no limits indoor well, range. You walk into a place just, like boom, that. You, you could hear it just explode. You walk into a place like that and you look at the ceiling and you're like, man, what kind of idiot does that? <laughs> and then I do it and I'm like, that's the kind of idiot that does it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that, uh, that you, that was a journey for you. And you've revamped all of that. Oh yeah. And and now you know with the hinge and yeah, um, I've got a I'm, it, I'm, it, I'm using a, a thumb release now that you know. I, but but I still practice with I the practice hinge. With Me the too. Hinge a ton. That hinge is just um, <clears throat> it's such the great equalizer. It it make it forces you to really kind of accept the float, the pin floating. Just deal with it. You know. And just let the shot break on its own without you jacking with yep. it. Yep. Um, and, <clears throat> you know, I've killed about as many animals with it as I've missed with it when I've yeah. hunted with a hinge. It's just, I went through a two-year yeah. spell where I, where I tried to really hunt with a hinge. And I've had more misses during that two-year spell with a bow than I ever had before or after. Since I switched to the thumb release for hunting, I don't think I've missed Yeah. archery. But man, that hinge, I went through some struggles trying to hunt with it. It's just yeah. not. It's just not for me. No, and there's guys that can do it. I mean, I, I, I think, I think Phil Mendoza. Mm-hmm. I think he still hunts with the hinge, and and you know, but he, you know, he's just he's mastered it, man. Yeah. Bo, I think Bo might still, <clears throat> but there's yeah. some people like David Brinker, <clears throat> buddy David Brinker. He has to shoot pretty much with the hinge, or or it's just target panic. Yeah. Too much target yep. panic. So we got a little backstory, you know. Yep. You've you've come a, a long history. way, a little history. And uh you got your first bull elk with a bow this year. Congratulations. He's, yeah. He's a beautiful bull. He was, He's a yeah. stud bull. He I, I, he was he was he was just a four by five, but man He's unique. Yeah, he was. He was super unique. I mean I saw I saw him come through that timber and He's not and, a ba- he's not a baby bull. No. Uh uh-uh. uh. He 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 actually has some some <clears throat> okay mass to him for a four by five you know most people are like that's a raghorn but no I mean, he he's wasn't. got these he's got these these uh <clears throat> eye guards that are just i mean they're super long and it was a cool it was it was just we we were stoked and you know we thought that week was just going to turn out we thought we were going to fill five tags yeah. in camp that week yeah and then you know uh that's extenuating circumstances we had no control over kind of kind of ruined that whole we would because the next morning we almost killed another bull and 50 yards away from where i killed mine 
You never know. <laughs> uh, you know, I was on a recent hunt with Lampers, mule deer hunting, <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> things had gotten hot. He had been dead for days and days yeah. and days, and all of a sudden, one day, just box out of the woodwork, chasing does, rutting, going crazy. Next day, pretty dead. You never know, like, when you hit those hot moments, a lot of times you think, okay, it's only going to get better now every day for the next five, six days. But I've learned in hunting that it's, you, those opportunities, they, they might, they might stick for four or five days. It might actually get better every day. That You could have just hit the magic moment, though, yep. and, and it can be crap Done. the next day. Yep. <clears throat> so, so Brian, so Brian gets home from Idaho and he calls me and says, Hey, you know what, what, what are you doing? What are you doing in, in a couple weeks? Let's, let's go hit some late, some late rifle and, uh, elk, elk. and, and, uh, I had a deer tag and I'm like, well, you know, we, you know, we could go up to that area and, 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 and Brian said, well, I really want to really want to go check this, this out and we'll backpack in probably be like, you know four or five miles in and 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 at, and at the time i'm thinking i don't know if i said just four or five miles no, you, th- th- didn't i say more no <laughs> you didn't <laughs> and uh he's like i think you know i think we can i think we can get in there and really kill a, a good mature bull and uh you know be you know it, maybe two and, and i'm and i'm thinking well four or five miles we can get two bulls out be you know that wouldn't be it'd take a while but it wouldn't be too bad and and uh you know, in the weather at the time too, I'm going I'm so far, so good. And then you went up hunting with, with, uh, lampers for mule deer and, and I'm going and then, and, and it snowed and snowed and snowed and I'm going, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> I, I was actually kind of in the back of my mind, <clears throat> hoping that you'd get home from that hunt with lampers and say, yeah, that was a tough hunt. Um, Maybe we maybe maybe we'll put this off. <laughs> it was a it was definitely a grind because I because I'm looking at, at the high country weather and I'm going. <sighs> I just spent twelve days just freezing my can off, yep. negative five degrees. My air pad went flat the last four days of the <laughs> oh, hunt, man. three and a half days. I just could not imagine after 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 these <clears throat> last you know five days or whatever. I just could not imagine. Not having an air pad. These last in five the, days were child's play compared I know. to the temps that I know. we were dealing with 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 Lampers. Yeah. Um, and the distances were just way, and the terrain here was way easier. But I, I've never, I've, I mean, I've camped in the snow. Mm-hmm. You know, I've done stuff like that. Boy Scouts, all you know, whatever. You know, we we've, we've done some winter camping, but not. Not, I mean, it was just for, for me, I, I know for you, but you know, that, I mean, that's kind of the difference too, is, you know, I, I I'm home most of the time, you know, getting fat, being lazy, <laughs> doing nothing, you know, and, 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 and you're out, you know, all the time, all the time. Mm-hmm. But you know, I I can I can carry I can carry a pack. I you know I can for a fat guy. You're incredible. I, 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 You've lost a ton of weight, but you put some back on. <laughs> yeah, I did. And uh, when we were in Colorado together, you you we were, we were, I don't remember the first time I met you. You were heavy. Yeah, I, I didn't get back up that heavy. And within a year, you were thin. Yeah, I think I, I think I dropped like it was like forty or fifty pounds at one point. That's put, a lot of weight, yeah. dude. And then I remember hiking uh, the trails behind your house together, and uh, you know I'm you you had been working out a lot. And I was having trouble keeping pace and you were leaving me. I was huffing and puffing a lot. And, uh, I was like, all right. And then we did hunting with the kids yeah. and put on some miles. No problem. You were, you, you got yourself pretty fit. And then you started going to the CrossFit gym with me yep. and you got really fit from that as well. Well, and then you moved and <laughs> then I moved and, and I you got lazy. just let I, it all go. Yeah. I, you know, and there, I mean, there were other circumstances, you know, excuses yeah excuses i got lazy that's again <laughs> so let's talk about this hunt because i want to talk about first of all um sort of the physicality fitness part of it the actual hunt part of it and then the gear part of it okay now from your perspective because i talk about this stuff all the time yeah. i'm you know I'm, I'm i'm living it every day and uh i don't there's a lot of things i think i just don't think about 
and I'd like to get your perspective on a few things. And so let's just talk about, first, let's talk about gear. Well, let's talk about fitness because, you know, where, where we went and how we did it um, is kind of just a, an average day for me. Yeah. And for you, it was, it was not really intimidating. Yep. I was, I was super, I was super nervous about it. And, and, you know, as, 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 as so describe, describe it before, you, like what we did, we came in from the, from the one side of that, of that, of that mountain range. range. Yeah. That range. And, and, and I mean, we, we walked in there, I don't know, it was like two miles and it wasn't bad walking in. And, and we glass basically yep, spent, eight miles, nine miles spent, away. Spent a day glassing, really. I mean, we got we got in there in the you know early early afternoon, mm -hmm. glassed until dark. As a crow flies, I'm I'm not sure the distance on foot because you have to go all the way down the mountain and yep. up the other side. It's an eight or nine mile. Yeah, it was a long. And way. it's it's it would it was it would have been at least that and 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 roughly almost two thousand feet elevation drop mm -hmm. and then gain yep. to and go then to the climb other right side. back up to that. Yep. Yeah. So we we basically went and we glassed that entire mountain range because you can see the whole thing spotted tons and tons of elk all over that mountainside. Yep. And, and then and part of our <clears> goal <throat> and part of our goal was we knew we were going to see elk over there. Because I've been here before, yep. and and I there was a nice three forty bull that that I glassed up over there before, almost killed. We almost killed that. I just so I wanted to go back, found some big sheds yep. back there. I wanted yep. to go back. So the plan was to glass from one side of the mountain and, and then, then figure out how to get to where the elk, yep, how to how to how to cut it so that we didn't have the elevation gain and drop. Yep, and, and maybe the same distances, but at least not right straight up and straight down. Yep, and. uh and, and, and I mean, we found it. It's just, yeah. so we, we found our elk and I'm like, okay, oh, yeah. we now, found, we found multiple, multiple <clears throat> herds of elk up and there. hundreds and hundreds yep. of elk. So I'm like, all right, that's where I want to go. <clears throat> Let's figure out how to get there. And I think that's when you, it dawned on you that we were in. Tr well, because I'm looking up there and you know, there's like this, there's like this snow line mm -hmm. and we're, and, and where we're looking at going it was either there. There was a trail that was like right at the snow line, mm -hmm. but it was. I mean, it was probably ten miles in on that trail. I, you know, and, and it probably wasn't that bad a walk in. You know, we 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 would have been in and out of snow the whole time, mm -hmm. but not the whole time. Yeah, and and we talked about that, and we even tried finding a way up there, but we you know ran into you know private public land issues, you know access blocked. And we ended up coming around and and finding a road we could get pretty far up on the four wheeler. And actually, if it hadn't been for so much snow, we would have got we would have got another couple three miles Basically, up that road. We we figured out how to <clears throat> get ten miles back yep. on a on four wheeler, the, yep. and then we had to go another ten miles on foot yes. to get to where the elk were. Yeah, but it was it was ten miles. And up over a mountain pass that, I mean, I don't know who I don't know who considers that a mountain pass. <laughs> you know, the mountain goats. I don't know, but you know, but the 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 toughest thing was was it was the snow. Mm -hmm. You know, I I feel like without the you know, not that it would have been easy for me. You know, super easy or anything would have, but it would have been a lot. E I I just not used to carrying a sixty pound pack. Mm -hmm. And trudging through, you know, s snow that, <clears throat> you know, for 300 yards is like walking on a beach mm -hmm. in, you know, like sand, soft sand and just your feet slipping and, and then changing to this crunchy stuff that, you know, and, 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 and ranging everywhere from, I don't think we ever had anything that was, that was below like a lower calf. Right. Depth. And, yeah, and, and, and snow. there were, and there were even some spots where we were breaking through, you know, it was up to up thigh high. Yeah. It was skis or snowshoe <clears throat> kind of snow. Yep. And, uh, you know, I just, I just, I wasn't, I wasn't prepared for that. Um, I, I, I a couple of weeks before I went, I, I said to my wife, I need, I need to do something. She's like, yeah. She's like, you're going hunting with Brian. You better, you better get your butt in gear. <laughs> and, uh, I went, yeah, I should. And then didn't. And then didn't. Yeah. Again. Because, I, because you know, hunting with, hunt, hunting archery season, I did fine. 
you know, it was it it's was different. I, and, so, and I'd prepared a little bit too. So here's some <clears throat> some things. You know, late season you're dealing with weather and elements. Yep. Nature's trying to kill you. Yep, carrying heavy, carrying heavier. You got to carry way more <clears throat> gear because you got to have heavy yep. duty like your clothing, your yep. layers, your yep. boots. Everything is just heavier. Your shelters. You can't go light. Ryan Lampers and I have talked about this. When you're hunting late season, man, your gear just gets heavier. Yes. Um, and there's just not really anything you can do about it. And I did that. You know, I, I tried. Mm-hmm. I'm sitting there on the uh, you know on the phone with you four days before we go, and I'm I'm like, my pack's too heavy, man. I need to I need to shave weight. I did everything. Like I pulled out. I've got. I've got a sleeping. I carry. I typically carry a little bit heavier sleeping pad, mm-hmm. just for comfort reasons. And I'm like, it's worth the. It's worth the extra, you know, half a pound or whatever. Yeah, it actually, is pro- it's probably pushing a pound more than, than well, like a super light one. Well, let's talk about that. <laughs> so basically, we we end up hiking ten miles in uh, snow that comes up to the top of our gators. Yeah, basically, and uh, it takes us a few days to get back to where the elk are yep we get back there and uh, we get into just gobs of elk everywhere we we could have shot bull after bull after bull yep but i wanted a certain caliber of bull yep and we and and that was the goal from the outset you know we said we're not pulling the trigger on a on a on a spindly five point we're 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 looking for you know at least at least one you know a lot of people will, will will um you know, people get hung up on the idea of let's call it trophy hunting or whatever. Right. For me, it's it's an adventure. You know, I've killed a lot of young bulls. Yep. With a rifle in hand, uh, that's not a very big challenge f- for me. Uh, we were back there. We could have killed bulls nearly every day. We were there with a rifle. I, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to find that that I want that certain kind of experience in adventure yep. and trying to find that big mature bull is. Yep. Is well, the goal. I don't want the hunt to be over. That was just a small part of the whole experience. I mean, we went in there, you know, we've had we've had Ben and Anthony and everybody, you know, talking to you about, you know, let's find let's find a better way in there. Right. We've and been so that there was before. part of it too. We were exploring. I mean, it's we were absolutely we were, you know, it was it was just it was just an adventure. Part we're of, trying to figure stuff out. Part of what I'm doing when I do that is is <clears throat> I see a place miles and miles away. I do, I do this with Ryan a lot with Ben, cousin Ben a lot, you know, it's like, okay, even Anthony, when we were in Hell's Canyon hunting, it's like, okay, we see that. That's where we want to be. It'll take a day or two to get there. How can we get there? That's the, that's the fun part. You know, where Ryan and I killed our mule deer this year, it's like days and days to get to the spot, multiple river crossings and just days just to get to where the hunting begins. And then it's days to get out. It's not for everyone. No, this is not. This is. These are. It's not for me, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I, t- I told Brian that multiple times. I said, "I'm not. I'm not Lampers. I'm not trying to be Lampers. I look. I look at the stuff that you, that you and Ryan do, and I go, that's super cool. And I'll never do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> you did it this weekend. Yeah, this week. Yeah, I, I mean, and 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 seriously, what are your thoughts now? Because basically, we 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 uh, we go up about fifteen hundred feet in elevation through knee deep, calf deep snow, and then once we get up there, you know, we're we're in the elk and we're hunting them. But I think you know, you you seemed very uncomfortable as we were hiking in to the area. That was the other thing. Before I left, I told my wife, I said, if we get up there and we're in knee deep snow, I said, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and again, you know, she's going, yeah, whatever. You know, she knows, she knows dang good and well, <laughs> that when I, when I go with Brian call, I'm doing it. And, <clears throat> and, you know, and, and I don't know. I was just, I just kept thinking to myself, we're going to have to pack an elk back through this you know along with this 60 pound load that i have and you know and and it was just it was daunting Uh to me because you know i I haven't done it and uh and so it was it was just 
you know, and I, and I, and I was, and I felt like I was, I was a little bit from the outset, I was a little bit ill-equipped, you know, I didn't have like, you know, like the micro spikes and stuff like that. We, you know, we ran into, t- we ended up running into town and grabbing some and, uh, you know, and, and actually that first night, you know, I, I'd brought that, l- that little tiny pad because I wanted to cut some weight and slept on that pad. And I went, this is crap, man. <laughs> Especially when it's cold. Oh well, and <clears throat> as long as I was on that little tiny strip, mm-hmm. I was fine. But any time, you know, like a shoulder or an elbow or anything got off of that, I mean, you could feel it cold. Yeah. <clears throat> but you know, so that was part of it too. I'm going. I don't have. I don't have the equipment that Brian does. I haven't been doing this stuff. Brian does this all the time. I'm like, I, I, I you know, I look like an amateur here, and. uh I you know, I was, but see, you did it. Yeah, you did it. And yeah. last night, well, um, and, and I mean, even that first night after we went up over the pass and stuff. I mean, when we when we finally set up camp, I was I was I was thinking to myself, I cannot go any further. I'm done. This I w- there's no way we can pick up camp tomorrow and move another. It was like five miles, uh-huh. you know, down to where down to where we wanted to be, and I'm going. I just I can't I I can't do and you know and I, and and I you know and I was moody and and you know for about half of that first day I didn't I stayed way behind you because I didn't want to talk to your stupid camera <laughs> because I was pissed and uh, but you know when we when, when you know I just I was just like you know I'm like you know there the, you know there, there's there's in the back of my mind going Brian's not gonna quit. And you know, and you don't, you know, dang good and well that you, that you're not going to walk away from him and leave him here to do this by himself. He goes kills a, you know, and, and I, I was thinking about that too. You know, it'll take him, it'll take him three, you know, three, four, five days maybe to to get an elk out by himself. Uh, and frankly, I was prepared to just yeah take half the next week. But uh, to you get know, it but out. I'm but I'm thinking to myself if if the if the if the roles were reversed and you know, I mean anybody anybody with you know within my close circle of friends none of us would do that to each other you know and and and, and, and you know and it, the thought never crossed my mind to ditch you the you know the thought was maybe i could talk him out of it and i'm going no you can't <laughs> dude i wanted to get there yep and and i, I wanted and, to and learn so i just you know i i took that next morning and kind of coaxed myself into it and then and then it was like let's do this and even even down there when we got down there and and I mean we talked about it we talked about taking one of those smaller bulls and I was like you know what if we do it we do it and you know you suck it up and we get that thing out of here you know I I just I'd I'd resolve myself to it you know I I really didn't want because 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 of the goal we'd set from the outset I didn't really want to pull the trigger on a smaller bull but I thought you know if Brian decides to do it you know I'm I'm all in. Yeah, you know, and it, it just, you gotta you gotta break through that mental hump. It's just it, you know, and it's and for it's tough to do. Well, I know what you're physically capable of, even if you're not in shape. Yep, and that's not the problem. The problem is mental. Yes, it's all mental. Yep, and you know, I just hunted with Caitlin, with Anthony and Brock, uh, and the elevation gains and drops and the miles were just mind they were staggering yet caitlin 16 years old yep you know just she she went every step of the way smiling and well and the kids have done i mean our and, kids do that every time we take them out yeah too. and and i know you're you're as capable as caitlin is and mm, she caitlin's pretty tough she did the whole thing <laughs> so i'm like we haven't quite done what caitlin did so yeah. you're I will say this. The difference, though, is the weather is intimidating. It's daunting. Yes. When, when it's that cold, people get scared. They get nervous. They get uh, they get they want to run back to shelter. They want to yep. s- go to what's comfortable. And the you know a lot of times, uh, I can remember years and years ago when I would be out in the cold like that. I'd be anxious to set up a shelter like before the sun went yes. down and, and I'd want to have know where we were going to be before yep. it got dark. Or if a storm was coming, I was like, okay, I want to find a spot. Now it's like, 
you know, Man, I didn't want to lose any hunting light. And, and yeah. like with lampers, we, we'd glass until right at dark in the midst of a storm, a winter storm blowing and, and snowing. And then we just go find a spot in the dark and set up in the midst of that storm. Yep. And it didn't, it just panic, panic is what gets you. And so if mentally you're just like, yeah, it's cold, but I'm going to be fine. Yeah. You can really push through some things and it's not, I'm not saying like, this is how every hunt has to be either. No. We've talked about that, but sometimes you set up a goal and you, and you realize, you know, I don't know what it is that compels me, but there's something about what we experienced this week back there where no one else goes. Nobody. I mean, it, where it was all these elk are just bedded right below us, lounging heads. They just come out yeah. of the woodwork. The whole, the, our whole game plan, I mean, it worked out just, it was absolutely perfect. It couldn't, it couldn't have happened any more perfect than it did. We picked that spot from across that, across that you know, mountain range, mountain range. And we're like, we're going to go right there. And that's because there's no way hardly anybody can get yep. there. Horseback. Even with horseback, it's really, it's tough. really tough. Yep. And it's a long way. And you're right here next to wilderness. You you're you're getting to where yep. no one on a on yep. a the, floor... o- the, the only thing the only thing that that on foot the only thing that uh, that got us was you know everything worked out perfect other than th- those big bulls were they just they just weren't with those herds yeah and 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 I was hoping we'd glass up we did glass up a few bachelor groups of bulls yeah but e- but even those we there we weren't. Just, Never found, I never saw a bull, I would say, that that was over 300 inches. No. And we probably saw 20 bulls a day at Mm -hmm. least. Um, Some days more. And so, but that's another tangent. So, mentally, you're struggling. I remember when we got there. At some point, it was either that morning, the next, I think it was the next morning, you're like, you were talking about vomiting? Yeah. The thought, the the (laughs) thought of keeping going and you know and just you know the 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 night the night before I'd had you know just just dragging myself my fat butt in there um you know the, it just it just made me nauseous you know thinking we're going to get up and you know and I knew that it was going to be basically we we're going to climb up some more and then we were going to lose all that elevation that we'd gained all yeah. of it was gone and we were going to have to come back up it <laughs> You know, and then drop again and climb again. And and I had glassed two six-by-six six bulls that the night, the first day we hiked yep. in there. And they were about 1,500 feet below us. Yep. And I, and I, and, and they were right on the edge of what I was looking for. And we, and we talked, we, and, and we talked next, about that. We talked about dropping down and, and the, getting those. Yeah. And, or, the next, and the next morning, you know, I glassed them up again yep. and I got a really good look at them. And I really, one of them, I was like, man, that is a pretty good bull for what we're seeing. Yeah. But he still wasn't, but he wasn't, he wasn't what got me super excited. Yeah. And we were, I could have killed him. We could have dropped that oh, yeah. thousand feet, got, got in 300 yards. We watched where he bedded. They were the bedded the same spot the day before. Yeah. It would have been, it would have been cool, but he wasn't the type of bull I was looking for. And we were five miles from the end destination. Yes. Where there were hundreds and hundreds we of We knew elk. they were there. We knew there and were no people. We knew there were we we knew that there were at least a hundred head of elk over there. And when we got over there's there, two groups of at least yes. hundred. And when we got over there, it, I mean Sure enough, they were there. Yeah. Just just uh Piles. Turn, turns out the biggest bulls though were the two sixes that we left behind yep. about midway through the trek. Yep. But even then, you know, they weren't what I was looking for. And, and I, part of this was again, to learn about the area. You know, I hunted with lampers this year for bear, spring bear with Jeff Lusk and Ryan lampers. And we, we shot five bears in five days. Yeah. You know, you can get two tags in Idaho. Uh, they're 40 bucks a piece bear tags. I mean, they're non, you know, non-resident prices. I mean, Idaho really is trying to get the bear numbers knocked down. It's a, and so you can even shoot two and they're yep. only 40 bucks a piece. They're giving these things away. So we, we went in there and we shot five bears in five days and it was incredible. It was just an incredible epic place. I love bear hunting and the bear meat is awesome. But Ryan had gone in there the year before 
and covered the same terrain with Jeff Lusk. And they didn't shoot a single bear. Yeah. They tried and they tried and they tried. But all the da- all the data he gathered from that first trip, right. he's like, you know, if I apply this a few weeks earlier or later in the season and I do this, this, and this, I think I think we could tag out and get some great bears. And so, sure enough, we go back in the next year. I get to go in. I benefited from that other year they went where nothing, where they didn't tag out. And I feel like now you and I have been back here into this area. We yep. we know this place, maybe different well, season. Be- between what between what you've done with with uh, with Ben and Anthony, you know, around here, and then what we did this year, man, I. I, you know, even You're, last night, we're zeroing even, in on even last night, we get out of there. You know, we were, we, we finally, we got out of there late. It was late. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we hiked out in the dark. We, you know, we, we covered, you know, 10, 10 miles or so. <clears throat> and, uh, we covered, you know, covered all that, all that ground back out in one shot last night, got out late, you know, got into town, grabbed something to eat. And, and I think, I think within, you know, thirty minutes. We were both on Onyx again, looking at you know, where looking, to go at, and- looking at what we'd done. You know, where 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 could these where could these mature bulls be going? You know, we've got some ideas on that, mm-hmm. and and you know, and so we. I mean, there's still there, there's still more we can do, but we also know that you know, if if we if we came back next year, I'm you know, I'm I'm a hundred percent confident. Mm-hmm. That, that that we could put ourselves right back on those big herds, and we could, we could kill a bull. It's and just, a lot of these big bulls they break off from these herds. Yes, as it gets later, as it gets later in moving. the season. And so we knew dang good and well that it's possible that yeah. by the time we get on these few hundred head of elk, that we don't actually see a big herd bull with the group. But it's also entirely possible that there's a big herd bull nearby. Yep, in a canyon or whatever, just just shadowing, just shadowing, or being near. So, you know, it's it's such a um, learning experience to get out and do it. Um, and so a lot of that was, hey, let's leave these two six by six bulls behind. Let's go deeper and see what is around the next corner. Yep. And that's kind of the adventure. It was more about just the experience and getting back here and learning about it than necessarily shooting, um, you know, right. a bull. And sure enough, at the top of the mountain on the way out yesterday – I had a bull yeah. at 35 yards. Yeah. We, we tri- that was, you know, a five by five, six by six. They were right by the, right by the trail on the way out. At yeah. uh, the peak of the mountain. We wouldn't yeah. have had to like carry them no. up any, it would have been all downhill, uh, 1500 foot downhill in about, uh, seven, six, seven miles. Um, so, I mean, I almost shot one Yeah, right there because it was packable and get out. But then it's like. I'd just be shooting one to shoot one. It wouldn't be the the one and the goal I was after. And the freezer's full. Yours is full yep. from elk this year. Mine's full. I got more meat than we're consuming right now. I could give some of it away, right. which I love to do. But on this hunt, it was like, look, I know we're getting back there. I know we're pushing your physical limits just based on your experience level. I really didn't want to uh, sour you to the point where you never want to hunt with me again but I really want to push you to the next level and see what you can do. <laughs> when you were like, you know, fighting back the, the feeling of vomiting. Um, I was like, you know, I've been there before. Yeah. I've been there before where I've been back, you know, in a daunting place in daunting conditions and been like, ah, oh, man, I don't know. Well, it, I'm, I mean, it wasn't even, I mean, I, I was, I, I wasn't concerned. the The cold doesn't really bother me that much. I, I mean, I can I can deal with I can deal with cold feet. You know, I can you know. The, yeah. There's just you know I'm I'm I, you know I I I grew up in this stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I also you know I also knew that you know all it takes is is you know one little turn of the weather unexpected, which happens all the time. It at eleven, twelve thousand feet, yep. and worse than you know, we're, you know, and and, and I and just we're at eleven thousand feet. Is I was where just, we're at. I was just, I was just worrying the whole time about. Well, you know, for for those first few days, I you know, I'm just just all this all this stuff that I don't know. It didn't really matter. 
But you know, it's like I said, it's mental. It's yes. that what you say to yourself. I'm making. How you I was. Talk to I was. Yourself. I was coming up with excuses. <sighs> but now, in hindsight, what do you think? We're only one day away from it. <laughs> I mean, because la- um, yesterday we decided uh, we knew there was going to be some if weather. You, if you said this morning, let's go run back up there. I'd be like, uh, peace out. Right, but if you were fresh, you know, we're both tired. Yeah, right? we covered some. Major well, miles. I mean, and 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 I'll and I'll go home, and 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 this is what I do. I do this after after you know, I do I do a lot of I do a lot of backcountry fishing, mm-hmm. you know, fly fishing, and 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 you know, just backpacking with the kids. You know, I I, I love to do that stuff, and and uh, and after every single one of those trips, I go home. And I go through my gear, and I and and I, and I look at it, and I'm like, you know, what what can I what can I cut out that I don't really need? What mm-hmm. can I add to this that that would be beneficial? And you know, and 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 I'll and I'll do that, when, mm-hmm. you know, over here over the next few months. And I mean, did you when you got you know looking back on it? I mean, are you surprised with what you were able to do? Did it surprise you? Oh yeah, you know what we accomplished. Oh yeah, yeah. For yeah, I mean, for for again, for you, it's not that big of a deal. You know, you've been. You, I mean, you've been doing this. Since. I told you that first night. I was like, Dwayne, we didn't really do right. anything. This was right. like easy. And, and I'm going suck it up. And I'm going screw you, Brian. <laughs> it's like suck it up, Dwayne. You Get may a better not attitude. have done much, but I did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but. Um, <laughs> You know, I just you know once once I once I get over that that in, that that initial mental hump on it, you know, just the, the you know those last two days just it was just great. It was just walking, yeah. You know, and I just kept telling myself that, you know, uh, you know I've got that rifle on the one side of the pack, you know, so so that my 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 load feels mm-hmm. a little bit, you know, and you know, and, and and that was bugging me for a couple of days, and you know, finally I was like, you know what, it's just it's it's only sixty pounds. You know, I, I, I can carry 60 pounds. This isn't that big of a deal. And, you know, the thing is, like, I didn't notice any uh, discomfort, any misery, nothing. Like, for me, hiking up the mountain was exciting. It was fun. We were yeah. going where I wanted to go, chopping through the snow, getting, you know, getting up in the morning and glassing. You know, I couldn't wait for the neck. What was going to, what we're going to find, you know, yeah. maybe there's a bulk. And in that, those first two days, I'm just I'm, I'm just trying to get through it. I'm yeah, just like, I remember getting up like a couple hours before you did and glassing all morning. Yeah, on that first and that I, first morning. Well, and I and I I I I heard you get up, you know, and 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 I was wondering if there was going to be a mutiny that day or not. I was buried in my sleeping <laughs> bag, and I'm like, you can you can glass by yourself. <laughs> so we, uh, you know, and so I do, but you know, then we get in there and we experience what we experience at the end of that hunt. Yeah. And, and then I was like, well, um, we know there was going to be weather dumping and we had a 10 mile, uh, of, of 10 mile ride on the quad through some sketchy yeah, it was snow. Sketchy. If we got any snow at all, we were screwed yep. where we had that, where we had that thing parked anything and, and we'd be going 20 miles an inch out of, on in, foot. Yep. An inch of snow and we would have been, it would have been. So we were like, well, we just got to We got to get out. Yep. And so it was like we could hike out in the, you know, all in one day, 10 miles all the way out, which I wanted to do because it's yeah. like, well, we're we're done. Once we hiked out, once we hiked out of the area, there was one, one spot where we could kind of hunt mm-hmm. on the way back, which we got to by the afternoon. Right. And we there was just no play. After that, it was all thick country and there's yeah. no, no sign. Yeah. Of even, elk. even where we, even where those ones were by the trail. If we had camped there, kind of, it, yeah, kind of, I mean, it would have been like those uh, those elk weren't going to come walking back there that next morning, probably. Mm-hmm. Just you know, they weren't really spooked. They were just like something's not right here, and it, you know, it they, wasn't a huntable area. It just, no, it just was, happened. To you couldn't sneak see up anything. You, 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 it's just kind of get lucky. But, so it was <laughs> like, well, I didn't know if you were equipped to do ten miles in one day yeah. through knee deep snow. And we'd already toe picked our way in, so it was like we were going to be stepping in our own snow steps from yeah. from the way in. So we'll pick Still up a little sucked. speed. So it's like, mm. and then sure enough, Dwayne, you did the entire ten miles. Yeah. In well, and day. I just kept, I just you, you you were talking, you were talking about hunting with Lampers. He just he goes faster than you, you know, it, on mm-hmm. the, at the outset, and 
you know, you just, you just get your pace and you just keep your pace and you just try to keep that pace the whole time. And so, you know, as I'm following you, you know, I'm just like, you know, okay, Brian's 50 yards in front of me or a hundred yards in front of me or whatever. I'm like, I just didn't worry about it. I'm like, uh-huh. just, just keep your pace, you know, and you'll catch up eventually. Yep. And you did. And, and that, you know, and, and I mean, there are even times where, you know, I'm like, you know, muscles tightening up and, you know, having to stop and stretch. And, you know, I, I was even counting steps on the way out. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to get, I'm going to get a hundred steps before, you know, and, and, and I'll stretch a little bit. I never, I never like stopped, took the pack off, dropped everything and, you know, and, and took a long rest. I just, I just, I just paced myself. And and stuff would start tightening up and and you know and and I was counting and I was like all right this is where I you know and, and you know and sometimes I'd stretch it out further and yeah you know, I just I don't know, just work just work through it I mean you yeah. know I was like I was like you're not dying you know you're you're not it's you know, crazy, you're physically though. you know physically you know you I don't have knee problems I don't have you know I, I don't have I don't have any of these physical ailments that 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 would that would prevent me from walking yeah well on the way here I was listening to that book uh, by David Goggins uh, can't hurt me yeah and he 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 was talking about you know the mental part of everything in life yeah everything we do and there's so much potential that we have within us yeah so many so much ability that we have but our 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 mind seeks comfort it seeks yeah. familiarity it's well and seeks- i i revisit that all the time i think it i think it was david goggins but I, but i remember i remember you talking to to cam about it one time it's like you know most people they hit that you know, like forty percent of their ability, and mm-hmm. they're and and they're like they think they're I'm, maxed. I'm done. I cannot do any more. You know, and and that and that and that first day climbing up over and 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 when I got to camp, I'm you know, and I'm like I'm done. You know, and I and that next morning I went I went through that conversation again. I do it all the time. I, I I've I've done it with. I took uh I took some I took some um kids on some girls on a uh with my wife, we, we took some girls on a, on their first backpacking trip, mm-hmm. you know, and I, and I do that all the time. I, I have that conversation with my kids. I, I revisit that conversation yeah. all the time, you know, and I'm laying there in that tent and I'm going, you know, I tell, I tell these kids this all the time and here I am acting like a giant, you Pansy. know what? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's the P word I was looking for. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm like, I'm not even, cl- I'm not even close to 40% yet. But you know, when we get back there, though, and I could tell you were like you were really anxious to get up, set up a tent. Yeah, like let's figure that. Let's I, yeah, that first night I was for sure. You're like, and let's and not sure how this is going to go because you haven't done this a lot. Well, and I'm sitting there looking. I'm going. There's freaking two feet of snow all over this place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you and I. Uh, so we set up camp. Yeah, and it set up a really nice camp. It was actually really nice. We kicked that snow out, and I mean, we had mostly a dry night in that tent. Yep, kicked the snow out. We had a really, uh, it was a beautiful camp. We had lots of wood that burned hot. Yep. So, how did that? Because a lot of times, you know, you get out there and you're like, "Man, why am I doing this?" And this is so far, and we have to go all the way back, and all these things go through people's heads, yep. right? And they're 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 all you have a lot of anxiety about it, but then you set up a tent, you get the fire going, you relax, you know, you're in a sh- safe, warm shelter, you eat, you sleep, and it has a way of like completely resetting where you oh, yeah. feel like I can't do this anymore. And you're like, no, I could do this every day. Yeah. H- how did that first night <clears throat> change or did it? I don't know. I don't know if it was so much the first, I mean, it definitely, when I saw how that how that camp was gonna be, I was like, okay, we're good tonight, you know. And and but I still, you know, that first night it was still. I was like, you know, I was laying there a lot, just thinking to myself, you know, what did I get into? Well, I mean, I knew what I was getting into. I was like, why did I? Why did I get myself <laughs> into this? But I mean, it definitely took the edge off. Mm-hmm. You know, having ha- you know climbing in there, having having 
the fire, you know, a hot meal and, and, you know, just, it, it, it just, man, it just, it soothes the soul. Yeah. And, and I still wasn't happy, <laughs> but, uh, you know, really, I mean, really that second night, you know, where, where, um, where we set up on the snow, but that, that, that second night, you know, where we set up. I mean, there was just no way to clear that snow out and and get a dry get a dry patch. And I'm go and, and that one there, I'm uh, that that was where I was going. This is going to be a miserable freaking night. Well, and I've slept on four feet of snow right. multiple but I times, haven't. and it's nothing. You know, not in a long time, at least. Right, right. And uh, and I'm just like, <sighs> we're really setting up right here. And and once we and once we got set up and got everything kind of laid out, you know, I was I was over getting wood ready, and 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 I you got the you got the tent, the tent, the tent, the stove set up, and and I get back and and just the way it was all set up, and you know, and, and I and I looked inside of there, and I was like, this is pretty nice, mm-hmm. you know. Got in there, and, and 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 it was actually it was a really, I mean, the fire burned out, you know, and it got a little cold in the middle of the night, but but you know. I was prepared with, you know, I was prepared from that aspect with like a good sleeping bag and stuff. You know, I wasn't worried about that. Yeah. I was just, you know, we got in there and, and, and had, you know, we're able to have an, a, a nice fire and, and get that food and, 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 and just, I mean, it recharged me right away. Yeah. You know, and slept good, got up the next morning and, you know, and you I was like, it. I was like, let's, let's go kill something. Yeah. Let's you, kill this. you were, as the trip progressed you were transforming before my eyes. Yeah. And that last day, the last couple of days, you were a totally different person than you were the first couple of days. Yeah. Um, and I think that so much of that's mental and you learn a lot about yourself on these kind of experiences. I think that's why I, I crave them. Yeah. Because they, they, yeah. <sighs> there's something that they change in you. Well, I'm not gonna, you know, again, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm just like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm not gonna, when I when I settled with the with the fact that you know I wasn't going to quit you know and and really where we were at yeah we had a talk that day and I was like so where do we stand here yeah and you're like well I'm not going to quit I mean yeah. I might not like it but I will, you you will not see me quit I was like all right yeah I can deal with that good I can work with that. all right I can deal with the the sour attitude. You just need to know you're well, not going to quit. <laughs> so some of that's just my personality too. I right. Mean, I mean, I, I I don't think I'd be any fun if I didn't have sarcasm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, uh, so let's let's kind of switch to uh, gear because this is a a new kind of hunt mm-hmm. um, under these kind of conditions. What are some of the, let's say the top let's say uh, six pieces of equipment that you used on this trip that you're like, wow, this is, this is kind of a must have in my kit. The, uh, I mean, number, n- number one is, is, the, is the trekking poles. You know, I, I felt like really, I, there's no, I couldn't, I couldn't have got in there without them. I, I, you know, the, 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 the micro, the, the micro spikes are probably up there, mm-hmm. but, you know, I we we could have done it without those. Yeah, yeah. With with the, without the trekking poles, yeah. man. I don't. No, I I agree. I feel like trekking poles. I don't understand. <clears throat> I'm I'm wondering, guys that don't use them. I'm wondering what where, where how are you hunting and where are you going? Because yeah. for me, they're they're yeah they're absolutely. I can't go without them. Yeah. Now I can sh- I can you know if I break one or something goes wrong, I Which can you fashion. Did. I did. You can make one out of a stick or something like that. Yeah, but even buy. even there, the 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 poles we were using, I don't know. You know I was using the sissy. Yeah, sticks. we were using sissy sticks, and and I he stepped on one and <laughs> with st- those with those micro spikes yep. on. It wasn't it wasn't a failure. Uh, you know, it wasn't a failure like it got caught in the snow and broke. It, it was it got stuck Brian in the snow and then it fell against a log. As I was stepping and I fell backwards and I yeah. happened to basically. And I, I don't think right on it like I, I would think snap a, pole, a stick. I don't think there's a pole out there that's going to withstand that. But but no. the cool thing I was I, that happened and I and I look at Brian. And I'm like, oh, you're going with one pole the rest of the time. And uh, he he picks it up and he looks at it and where it had snapped, he just 
he just kind of and stuck it back in, and you know it was a little bit shorter, but it was still functional. Yeah, and um, I mean, really, luckily we had we you know that was that first day where we 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 hiked back out and we had another set of poles in the in the truck, but you could use that the rest of the time. Yeah, it was it was tall enough <laughs> that I could use that pole, but but yeah, but, but it, so the carbon fiber is what snapped. Yep. And, and I and, lost and, about six inches. And you'll of see that with carbon pole. fiber with that side impact. Mm -hmm. You know, straight down, it's 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 really strong. Oh, but that side impact sometimes will bust it. I've been really impressed with these trekking poles. Oh, yeah. I've said I've talked about them a lot. People can go buy a pair. They're like 111 bucks if you use the code gritty. And I'm not just saying that because I get paid. I do get paid by by sissy sticks. It it helps the podcast. But they're just a solid set of poles. Oh yeah. And well, in 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 one hundred ten one hundred ten bucks, I mean for I think they're like two fifty for this the same carbon fiber right. aluminum mix at like REI. So yeah. the value is crazy. Yeah, it's you know for bang for your buck that they're they're great. But so so that's one. Um, another one would be the micro spikes. Yeah, the micro spikes were 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 a game changer because I showed up with you know I I thought to to uh throw a cheap junk you know yeah, yeah. The, the those things wouldn't have made it through the day no i, I would have lost those in that snow no i like the cat what are they katula or Cat katula katula yeah. from rei they're backpackers yeah. choice they're the ones that lampers uses i no, used, they were, they were i used to lay was but they pick up ice yeah they they have too big of a metal um, well and these these will too when you get in like the the really you know that really slushy kind of snow. You know they'll pick up a little bit, but it but it was nice because really, I mean, you could just do a little heel kick and and, and it and, and it pop, and it was all gone. Yeah, no, the the other brands I've used, a couple other ones, they the flatter the metal, and I don't know what type, but they pick up ice and it doesn't come off. Yeah. It makes them virtually impossible yeah. to use. They're even more dangerous than not using them. Well, and yes, so, yesterday I even I, I lost the one. And so I walked out, you know, I walked out, you know, the, the last, you know, five, six miles with, with one of those micro spikes on and, but it was still, I mean, it, just having it was, one, it is, was, yes, it was big. Yeah. Um, you know, just, you know, you get, there, there, there were spots we were hitting where you had to get a little bit of a foothold mm -hmm. and, you know, and, and you just even having one, even in the grass, the that, wet yep. grass on the slopes, oh, yeah. um, the mud muddy kind of even boulder hopping <clears throat> yeah just oh yeah rip because we we as we, long as they're not slimy we 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 skate we scaled across that that rock slide to get over to where we wanted to be to look at those elk mm -hmm. and with those spikes on it was it was yeah totally different so uh so the spikes <clears throat> in the in the in the trekking poles what else um sleeping bag i mean a good sleeping bag is just it's cold yep if you if you're out, I in, think the sleep system. Yep, yeah, uh, bag pad. Um, yeah, was, uh, the, so you one, used a Kafaru slick bag, a zero degree. Yep, I use zero degree slick bag, which I love that bag. It, I mean, it's, it's a, just heavy. It's a little on the heavy side, but man, that thing it it dries out quick. You know, I you know you can climb in it. You can climb in it a little down. I, there were there was there were. I think every night I climbed in it and I had you know, wet knees or whatever. Yep. And by the morning, my clothes were dried out and that bag was not wet. Totally. Yeah. And, a, you know, a little bit of heat and that thing just, it's, it's dry. Yep. And, you know, and, and the pad, you know, I'm glad we, we had the opportunity to run into town and switch that pad out. Not that that pad I had started out with was a bad pad. It's a, it's a four season pad. It's just not built for me. It's not quite wide enough. No. Your shoulders hang off the yep. sides. Yep. You really, my kids, it's great for mm -hmm. me, not so much. And if it's a different time of year, <clears throat> oh yeah. But if your if your arms hanging off and touching the ground, it's sucking the heat right oh, out yeah. of you. Yep. The ground is so cold. Yep. And and um, one thing, you know, I I my my Tyvek, mm -hmm. you know, I I, I typically, uh, you know, I I've, Dwayne brought the smallest piece of Tyvek known so to bad. man that well, barely just, fit his pad on it. So my my piece of Tyvek, <laughs> which is about twice as wide as that thing, <clears throat> Casey and I used it when we when we cut up my bowl. Mm. I had it in my bag. We pulled it out, so we had a. You know, and, and that ended yeah. up, it was just covered. No, I, I when just, you're in a floorless shelter, <clears throat> ground tarp, yep. excellent air pad, yep, and a sleeping bag. Yep. Those are all 
priceless. It's, and it, especially this time of year. Um, the thing to note there, <laughs> though, is that everyone is different. So the sleeping bag and the pad, pillow, if you have an air pillow or something, they're all, so much of that is individual. Yes. Like preference. Yep. How you sleep, how run, hot you run, stuff like that. Yep. And that's why, that's why my bag, you know, and that's why it's, you know, I, even, even that slick, that zero degree slick bag, I could probably shave like a half a pound if I went with, with a, with a regular length, regular width. You know, yeah. and mine's a mine's the wide just because I toss and turn a lot, and you can sleep. You can just roll and sleep on oh, your yeah. stomach. Yeah, and, and 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 the bag doesn't move. Yeah, you know, and it has a top zip, yep. which I really like. I, I've talked about that bag many times. I love that bag. It's it's heavy. Yes. Now I like the, but it's hard to find a synthetic bag um, that's a zero degree. I've even got I've got a down bag well, that's that's a zero degree bag that's only six ounces lighter. My Chilkoot, my Stone Glacier Chilkoot that's 15 degrees, that bag is truly f- warm at 15 degrees, yeah. which most of them are, f- if it says 15 degrees, I'm like, oh, it's a 40 degree bag, you know, because they all lie about oh, yeah. uh, the comfort ratings right. and stuff. So that that bag is, is really good. Uh, it's so light and so warm, but I've said this multiple times, like Lampers calls it the world's greatest sleeping bag. I'll I'll say that with a caveat. As long as you have a stove, right, to dry it out if it gets a little damp yeah. or gets wet, uh, it is a really comfortable. I love down. It feels better than synthetic. Oh, yeah. It breathes better. You don't yep. get as clammy or wet inside. Um, and weight to warmth ratio, it's hard to beat down. But uh, I don't like the idea of packing a down bag in if I'm staying in like a Hilleberg and there's no stove or fire. Yeah. Um, because once your down bag's wet, it's wet. Yeah. It's really tough to dry it out. And, but with a stove inside a teepee, it and everything w- dries out. Everything dries out in no time. Man, we, we were putting, we set that tripod up and, and, and would put stuff on it, boots, whatever. And I mean, just, I like to, if, if you have a couple tripods, you can pop those things yeah. up and you can tie a string between them yep. and you can just hang all your gear in the, in the t- peak of the teepee because it's like 120 degrees up there yep. and it's like 70, 80 down even, below. Even your trekking poles, if, if the, if that ground's soft enough, you mm-hmm. can, you know, you can, you can stick those in there well enough that, that you know, you're, you're not gonna be able to hang like boots or anything from it, but some of your lighter stuff, I mean, you know, you got, you, you, you have the means there to do it. Yeah. And there's some tie-ins around the peak as well, where you can hang some gloves and stuff yeah. up there, but all the heat rises, which is another one gloves. Yeah. I mean, well, let's talk about the shelter. Yeah. Because I, for me, ha- the means of having fire, you know, and, and that's another thing too, is a lot of people I've been, I've been, I've been using a floorless shelter for a couple of years and you know, people hesitate to, to try that out, but, you know, and, and again, this is the first time I slept on snow with it, but I've been sleeping in a floorless shelter for a couple of years and I mean, they're great. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and especially with the ability to put a, to put a stove in there, you, 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 you can't do that with, with a, with a floored shelter, you know, I'm at wall tents, stuff like that. But even there, you got to cut out. Yeah. You're talking like I carried the shelter. It's one and a half pounds, yeah. and and then it's like the stove is just under two pounds. Yep. So for three and a half pounds, um, we have a castle. We we had us in there and all of our gear and I mean stuff unpacked. I mean we it's strewn everywhere. I mean, there's you've got pictures of of hunt other hunts you've done all you know where you, where you can see the inside of that. And you got, I mean, it's comfortable. You, you've mm-hmm. got a lot of room in there and that stove heats that space Yep, and, yeah. and, and makes everything comfortable. So I, I, for me, that is a big deal. The yeah. sleeping bag is also a big deal. Um, you know, I've kind of explained my opinion on that here. Here's what I have noticed though, is everybody's different. So I really like Lampers told me, Hey, get this big Agnes four inch pad. <laughs> This is the bomb. And I'm like, eh, yeah. It could have been. And I'm using the Neo Air <laughs> light that I've had for like almost yeah, the nine Neo years light from or something. Thermarest. Thermarest. Yeah. 
And I've loved that pad yeah. uh, forever. I've never felt any chill through it, really. Um, so, But, you know, I got a hole in it for the first time in nine years. So I was like, it's time to try a new pad. So and I, you did. So I got the um, I got the pad lampers recommended. <laughs> and uh, <sighs> it's after dark, you know, because we'd been glassing. So first of all, I bought one and it was 20 inches wide. It's all they had. Yeah. And uh, I needed a pad for this trip. So I bought it, <clears throat> set it up in the living room, climbed on it just to see if I could handle 20 inches or if it's just too narrow. It was too narrow. I was just hanging off of it. And I'm like, this isn't going to work. So I aired it down, rolled it back up, took it back to REI, picked up a 25-inch wide one on the way out of town. Get up on the mountain. It's dark. Okay. I've just slept <laughs> like three and a half, three days yep. with a flat mattress with lampers. I'm looking forward to finally having a fat, warm pad to sleep on again. I open that thing up. It's fresh from REI. I should have blown it up before we left. It's missing the valve, and I cannot get it to hold air. Because it's just this giant gaping hole, and there's no way to so I'm yeah the 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 two way so you got the two holes the one is to deflate and you got the other one down below that's supposed to have a two way valve on it mm -hmm. so when you blow in it you know you take your mouth off of that valve closes you know that that little flap is gone it's non existent uh -huh. brand new pad brand new Sup pad supposedly it's dark it's pitch dark <laughs> and there's alcohol around so I'm not using a headlamp. And I'm blowing and blowing and taking my mouth off and blowing and blowing and blowing, taking my mouth off. Because the two-way valve, right, and it'll, it, it'll it, keep it, your it, air in. At this in. point, I'm not really paying attention either because I'm, you know, I'm getting my stuff ready and put yeah. in. And, and then I notice Brian over there. Uh, blowing that, forever. Forever. And, and I look down and I feel the pad and it's flat still. <clears throat> so then I know something, something's gone wrong here. And I realized that it's missing the two-way valve. It's just a big hole. So every time I take my mouth off of it, the air I blew in comes right back out. <clears throat> and oh, it was just I, I, the idea of sleeping on the ground again. My expectations had, had shifted after I spent all this money and time getting this pad, mm -hmm. only to have it be flawed. Faulty. Faulty. I was ready to kill someone at REI. I wanted to yep. choke. Yep, there were there. Were, yeah, if he could remember okay. the name of the salesperson, I had a minor meltdown. <clears throat> it wasn't minor. <laughs> Dude, it was, I lost. It mine. was. It was amazing. <laughs> it was, it, and none of it got on. I thought about pulling my phone out, but he was in that. He was in that stage where I was like, he might turn on me, so I better not. But at one point, at one in point, life, you it get was so angry. At one point, that pad was thrown on the ground and kicked. <laughs> I lost it. I acted like a child. <clears throat> it reminds me of my dad. I've seen my dad have a few meltdowns like that. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, I finally, you know, with some help from you, we got it to hold some air. It's probably 90% yeah. what you could fill it. It took a long time to try to finagle, put your mouth around that, and then pop it shut with your tongue and your teeth and everything. Mm. <laughs> I'm nice. No. Anyway, um, Suffice to say, I slept on it. Now, the baffles on that pad are vertical. They're not horizontal. The Neolite Air is a horizontal. Right. And for those who don't know, when I've used the Big Agnes pads in the past that have vertical baffles like that. When you sit in the middle of the pad, it, it folds. folds and the two ends pop up and your butt touches the ground. Yeah. And so you have to fill it with a lot of air. And then if you get it, even then, it still has that tendency to like fold. When the baffles are horizontal, it, they don't, it doesn't fold like that. They stay, when you sit in the middle of the pad, the pad stays on the ground and your, and your, your butt doesn't, whatever, wherever the center of gravity is, it doesn't punch through and touch the ground. Right. And uh, so I was like, well. I laid on that pad. I used it that night. I was not impressed. No. Not impressed at all. And I was thinking, you know, Lampers, here he is telling me this pad, not to mention it says three season, but it doesn't tell you the R value on that right. big Agnes. It's the SQL core, Q core or whatever pad. They're their most expensive pad. And it says three season and it says temperature range. I felt cold air through it the whole night. And there's at least, yeah. I mean, it was 
pretty thick pad. Yeah. So and even, s- even mine, mine was, mine was half the thickness of yours. I think yours is an R value of 4.5. 4. Yeah. It, that tiny one. And, yeah. and as long and as I was, climate. It, yep. It's a climate. And as long as I was on it, it was fine. It, but, but it just wasn't wide enough yeah. for me. If I got off the edge, I was getting cold. It wasn't that thick and padded either. No, it's pretty thin. It's, it's but a it, thin pad, but but it but, but it's, it's got that R value to it keep works, you warm. It works really good. Those I've been really happy with those. Um, when we were hunting mule deer, Ryan would wear his puffy pants, his stone glacier puffy pants, and then mm-hmm. he'd wear his stone glacier jacket, and then use his sleeping bag. And uh, I think Man, part of that it, too hot. I think part of that was negative five degrees, negative yeah, ten. That's true. But I think part of the reason for that is because Ryan's pad's not that warm. I think there's too much cold air coming through the pad. Ryan doesn't know it because, you know, uh, he hasn't used a better pad. That's my theory. <laughs> uh, no, seriously, I'm like, uh, I couldn't disagree more. I don't like the big Agnes SQLQ core for, yeah. for that late. It's too cold. Um, so I, we ended up needing to come back to town anyway. We were only, when we got off the mountain to go, yeah, we were only, around we were, the other it side. was, it was like 15 minutes back in a time. So we swung in and um, you got micro spikes. I got a pad. The pad that I got, um, you got a pad as well. Yeah. Uh, the pad that I got was back. I just went back to my old pad. It's got an R value of 3.2. At least it gives you an R value. It doesn't just say some arbitrary three right. season. Um, sure enough, I blow that thing up. It's perfect. It's like what I'm used to. The baffles are horizontal. My butt doesn't touch the ground and it's super warm. I don't feel any coldness through the pad. There was so much coldness coming through that big Agnes. It's not for me. Yeah. And so I think earlier in the year, uh, before conditions drop, I could really enjoy that big Agnes pad. But for late in the season, it's it just doesn't have – it's not insulated. It's yeah. just not insulated enough. Yeah. And it says it's a three season, not a four season. We are right. definitely it does in say four. That. And even, even the – They don't uh, make a four season <clears throat> no. one that I saw Mm-mm. there. No, they didn't have not at that particular place. We went. They might, but and, and uh, so I haven't done the research on that big Agnes. But yeah. you're getting into heavier weights too. Yep, where that neolite is super warm. It is and doesn't weigh. So it's 16 ounces yeah. exactly for the the 25 by 78 or yep. whatever it is 72 78. Yep, and so like I said, you kind of kind of got to go by what you like yep. and. You actually bought a Neo. It was a Nemo. Nemo. Yep. Yep. And I, I, I you know, and just, it's it's square. I've rectangular. been I've been using I've been using Climate for a couple of years, and and I love those pads. But they didn't, you know, this particular place we went didn't have them, and so I, you know, I, I was looking. That Nemo looked like a cool. Yeah. I, I like the square pad. Yeah. <clears throat> and uh, and and weight weight wise, I don't think it was any heavier than yours. Yeah. I think it was right about the same. Yep. And, uh, but it, 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 it was for, it was so far so good. It's great. I mean, I yeah. only have, you know, a few nights on it, but so far good. Yeah. I was, I was happy with it. I really liked your, uh, that, that pad, uh, as well. So be interesting to, yeah. but, um, the puffy pants, the Sitka puffy pants. Yep. That was the, that was the other thing I was going to say is, uh, puffy jacket, puffy pants. I didn't, I did not, I don't have puffy pants. I've, you know, I've always kind of been like, you know, I've, I've, I've heard conversations about, you know, putting them, slipping them on when you're glassing and stuff. And I'm like, whatever, you know, uh, you know, but this situation, you know, I got by without them and, yeah. and I could get by without them. I could continue to get by without them, but why get by without them? Oh, they're so nice. Right. The, when, when, when I slipped yours on, I was just like, ah. <sighs> Yep. You know, it was super nice. And the, the name of the game is is glassing. Yep. For hours. Yep. And hours. This time of year, this time of year you just you have to do it. You just it. sit behind the glass and to sit there all day in freezing cold windy conditions when you can throw a pair of puffy pants on cuz you're hiking mm-hmm. a lot and then you're stopping. Yep. They're, they're the ideal thing because you're not putting long johns on No. cuz you can't get them on and off. You know, these go right on the outside. I don't I just and, you, and the whole time I didn't I didn't use You're never going to hike with long johns. Yeah. So those, that's a great piece of I kit. Would, I would, you know, I, I, I didn't even carry a base. Uh, uh, Me either. I haven't used a long base John's layer for the bottoms years. Yeah. I haven't. Um, but those puffy pants were. Um, you, I, I use this Sitka Kelvin yep. hoodie or jacket or Kelvin jacket. Or, yep. Um, their heavy duty one, not their 
not their treated down one, which I have that one as well, but it's really puffy. Yeah. This is actually kind of, this one's kind of the ideal. Yeah. You use the Kafaru. I've, I've got the Lost Park Parka. Lost and, Park Parka. And, and I mean. That jacket's bomb proof. Oh, yeah. It's, I, a, it's a great piece of gear. It, 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 you know, I don't, I don't know, you know, I don't. I don't know all the technical specs on it, but synthetic. But the wind doesn't wind cut through it. It's it, got wind it, block. You know, it's, you're not going to hike with that sucker on. I, no, uh, uh-uh. no. But but I didn't ne- really with mine. Neither either. neither one of us. The most we did was last night. Um, we had we had a vest on yeah. over over our uh, you know, our long over sleeve top merino hoodie because you just when you're hiking you just you can't mm-hmm. you're going to sweat too bad. But uh, definitely. But when we every time we stopped and 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 we were going to spend some time glassing or whatever, you know, I just I just had that stuff, yeah, easily accessible. The one and thing we pulled I it out and one thing I didn't it. like about your kit was your backpack because it's so loud, yeah. and I have the same pack. It is. Yep. Yeah, it got as as it got colder, it, it's, especially as it got colder, it just mm-hmm. it crinkles. You and, have the Kafara Muskeg. Yep. Like the seventy, mine's the seven thousand, seven thousand. I have the same pack, I, I, and I, I liked it on. Kodiak. I like that. I like that bag. It's just as as it got colder, you know, and 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 it is. I mean, even even during archery season, I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, it's not. I don't like. It's too. It's too heavy. Yeah, and it's a little too. Well, loud. the bag's not that heavy. It the the whole know, system, right? It's a little too loud, and I don't. It's so big too. The seventy-seven thousand, the way it like you cinch it, and it's got all these bulging points. Yeah. And I don't know. It's not my favorite. I do love it when the when it's pouring rain. You're on Kodiak or Prince of Wales Island, or I I loved it on that those hunts. Yeah, I, I've been using because it I've just been... keeps everything dry, and your bag doesn't soak up a ton of water. And but for conditions like every just about every other hunt, I would much rather have. The bag I like, what I've got. I like that Stone Glacier Sky Talus sixty nine hundred. It's a killer bag. Yeah, it's way lighter, and uh, I just it it just and it rides better. Yeah, it rides a lot better. Although I think it's that's also personal. You right. got to try it on. You got to run it. You yeah. got to see. And actually, you know, some 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 of the some of the complaint because I, I I believe your back have, and your shape is totally different than right. Mine. And I and and the 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 frame that I have is the uh, it's the duplex. I think it's the, just I think it's the light. I think there's the ultra light and the light. Yeah. And I've got the light, and uh, you know, uh, the, I've I've heard s- some people complain about the way that 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 hip belt and everything sits and for me it works i you yeah. know i i haven't i don't have any issues with I it said, i mean I think is, is, it, is it on the heavier side yes but you know but i but i'm you know i can't there i you you can't complain about a about a high end pack like that yeah. i mean it's you're you're splitting hairs but yes. there is a difference in in yeah, you'll for find sure. as you try stuff you know and and and, and i and i've noticed that you know I, i've i've hunted with guys that, that have that have exos i've hunted with guys that have stone glacier you know even mystery ranch mm-hmm. you know there's certain there's certain parts of if each all of those packs that i really like yeah and now i brought you a pair of boots yeah. um both of us have crispy nevadas yeah. that and, we, and, I, and i had a pair but you know they so something we should talk about is when i buy crispy boots now I buy them basically a half size bigger than yes. than I would normally. That's what wear I have to start if they're doing leather. Too. Yeah, because the leather over time, long before the boot is done, has done aging, and I got to get a new pair. Long before then, they'll just yes. shrink a little bit. Yep. it's just, just leather, just a little bit in, in the toe. Yep, toe box area. Yep, and so and uh, so my ten my tens that I started out with, I don't know. I've had those things couple years a couple three years and and you know and and i but they just all of a sudden they're like i'm I'm going why does my foot not fit in these anymore mm-hmm. yep and 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 and, and, and that's not just a crispy problem that's i think that's a leather boot problem i think so but i think that the crispy i toured the factory i was mm-hmm. in italy i looked at the leather they use the reason these because it's very rare to get a boot right out of the box that's leather like that and have it be as comfortable as a crispy oh, yeah. I mean, you can buy it and use it that weekend, and they're going to be amazing. But they're made with a very supple leather, 
and they take a specific cow from a specific area of the world and they take the flank and they take the leather right out of that flank, that specific right. area. And they build this, the left and the right boot out of the same side of the one animal. Huh. So they're exactly matching. And <laughs> so these guys hand make, th- these are artisans in Italy making these boots. They're a high end boot. Now, <clears throat> I think because of that, they get a lot of moisture. They go through a lot of hot and cold in a teepee with a stove. They go back out in the right. snow. They freeze. Yep. A lot of guy. A lot of a lot of guys. You know, even like a wall tent. They'll mm-hmm. take. They'll take them and stick them right up next and, to that stove. Yeah, and I think that supple leather. Yep. Is more prone to shrinkage because if you get like a Kenetrek, that stuff's like such thick, thick leather. When you get those things, I've heard guys say they got to wear them for weeks before they can work them in because they're so stiff and that leather is not as prone to shrinkage right because it's such a stiff hard leather but it's also not a very comfortable supple boot either and so with crispy what i've done what i've started doing about two years ago i wear a 10 and a half i buy 11s yep i just you wear a 10 and a half you wear a 10 10 so I used to buy my exact size, which is a yes. 10 and a half. So I have a few pairs of Krispies that are 10 and a half. Yeah, lucky me. I that have shrunk, ones. which now fit you perfectly because mm-hmm. they're actually that half size bigger. Yep. And, and they were, I mean, they were, they were, they were awesome. You know, and even, man, they were, we saturated those things. And, and, and then here's the other thing too, is people don't realize how, I mean, maybe they do. I didn't realize that when you take leather like that, now I'm really religious about treating the leather yeah. with uh, like the crispy um, water yep. conditioner. Yep. Or yeah. Any brand. Yep. Right. There's, there when are... you treat the leather, it waterproofs it. So my boots didn't take on any water. Right. And after each hunt, I just yeah, quickly look, rub it I'd on. Look at yours, I'd look at yours at night and there's like all that, all that water kind of just beat up shed and off of fall it. Fall off. Yeah. <clears throat> and Your boot, were... I didn't, I treated all the boots in my size, but when I brought this pair to you, I just grabbed them out of the garage real quick on the day yep. I was leaving. Thought, oh, I'll give these to Dwayne because they should be the exact size for him, but I didn't treat them. So we got up here, and of course, yours soaked up a lot of water, and then at night, the boot would freeze. Yep. And I've done that before, and it sucks because you're trying to put your foot into an ice block Yeah. in the morning, or you're getting it dry, but... Or you're, you're getting it to unthaw by the stove in the morning, but then it just refreezes wor- within yep. an hour yep. being out in the snow in those cold conditions. So waterproofing the leather, yeah, probably I, even even there the uh, pro- that 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 probably wasn't even the worst part of it. I mean, because uh, again, I mean, I can handle I can handle some cold feet. Well, and you, it was were- it was more it was more that 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 that, that leather was holding so much water; those boots and just they felt heavy. Well, those boots too, I was running the Wild Rock and you're wearing the Nevadas. Yeah. What I've noticed is the Crispy Wild Rock has more insulation and it's a late, like a four season boot. And I'd say the Nevada is right at that three season, three and a half, three and a half. So you can use it on a hunt like this, but they're just, they're just not quite warm enough. When when you stop, if as as you're hiking, they're fine. Right. But when you stop and especially if they've taken on some moisture. Yeah. And then the wind is blowing. Yep, they get cold quick. There's your toes, your feet just get cold. And then when you move again, they're just right on that edge. The wild rock, I almost don't have to think about my feet. Yeah. They're just warm the whole time. Yeah. And yes, they get a little damp. One thing that uh, I have really sweaty feet. I've talked about this lots. So I bring different pairs of socks. I might hike four or five hours, stop, switch socks out right then because they're so saturated. Put a fresh pair on. But for me on a seven, eight, nine, ten day hunt with as much as my feet sweat, leather has a hard time drying on the inside. Right. And what'll happen is they'll soak up all that moisture inside from sweat and then it just won't ever go yeah. away. Yep. So every day you're putting a, a wet boot on. Yep. And you and you I mean you can do stuff like pull the pull the insole out and dry it out at night to, and stuff and like that. And that helps, but it helps a little bit. One but thing, it's still it's still in there. One thing I'm gonna experiment with <laughs> next year maybe even later in this year is Luke Dusenberry uh, from Mountain Ops, camera man from Mountain Ops, a good friend of mine. He, he brought these little tiny plastic boot dryers yeah. with fans that are battery operated, that are battery operated like a double a, 
and he put those in his boots in New Zealand. And at first I mocked him, but they didn't weigh a thing. And to be able to put those boot dryers down in your boot and they just... Did they, it last the whole time? Yeah. On the, for, on the ever, on like the a battery. nine volt or something. Hmm. And um, that might be the ticket. You know, you get your stove going, it's warm in the teepee, and you just throw those little plastic things in there and yeah. your boots stay fresh and dry every day. Yep. Um, because uh, my feet sweat. Oh, like, yeah. So much. Yep. Um, especially if I get adrenaline, yep. they just gush. So and, and, and uh, I mean, that's the, I, that's the case with a lot of guys, mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they just, you know, and so socks are in that mix too. Yeah. You know, having, having a good solid, you know, person. Uh, I have to wear a sock liner. Yeah. Or I will get blisters. Yeah. My feet will and be I, and thrashed. I don't, I don't have to wear the sock liner, but man, I make, I make, I, 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 I put money into socks. Those smart wool sock liners, the thin, mm -hmm. the thin, thin, thin ones, and then a good pair of uh, like yeah. darn tough. Yep, I've been, or... I've, I've been wearing, I, I've, I've been wearing darn tough for a long time. I, you know, I, I, I like smart wool socks too. They're, mm -hmm. they're super. They're I think super I like the darn tough more. But the darn tough are they're, they're, they're just they're durable. I've also used these farm to feet. Yep, I, yep. But <clears throat> those darn tough. Yep. they're indestructible. Yep. For, for, for backpack hunting, man, they just, they, they just, I, I, I don't, I haven't worn a pair out yet. Yeah. And, and, and I've been wearing them. I wear them a lot. Yep. Yep. Uh, the butt pad in the rifle cover. Yep. I, w I wished I'd had the butt pad. The butt pad was nice. People use those, those Neo, um, or the Thermo Rest yeah. Z pads. Yep. Um, yeah, I've even I've I've bought like the you know the little fo the little foam one and yep. the, from a knockoff one off a of, on, online. I like the and one that um, Western Binds <laughs> built for me and Ryan. I, that, that, and same with the gun cover. The gun cover was sweet. It's sweet. I, I we're we're talking to because this is just a guy that made them uh, um for us. You know, he doesn't produce them. He just is yeah. like he just designed it. Yeah, when you first, when you first look at that thing, you're like, yeah, but you, what if you have to make a quick shot? That thing comes off quick. Yeah, it but it, really just quick. the way it encompasses the scope yeah, it and the whole everything thing and yep, keeps everything. the muzzle from getting dirt all the in things, it and, all the things you need protected or protected on it, and you know, and you can get it off when you need to. It's padded, kind of. Yeah, um, I like it. Uh, I feel more secure having it on there, banging a scope or something. Mm -hmm. It just got that that thickness yep. around it so yep, that um, was cool. anything you you brought that you don't like or you won't use or you're just like forget it i'm constantly i'm constantly going through like food i'm constantly mm -hmm. working with that you know i'm i'm always a work in progress with that stuff um my 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 dinners i was really happy with um some of my snacks some of them you know i get i get tired of trail mix man like i can i can eat like an initial bag of it and then mm -hmm. I'm I'm done with it the rest of the time and almost the point where I'd rather just not eat. Yeah, I don't it's not for me. <clears throat> and um you know just you know there's just certain little things there with with the with the food that I'm I'm always tinkering with. It for me it changes dramatically from hunt to hunt as yeah, well there's because that too. because like this hunt I brought a lot of those fancy nut blends with the Sahara yeah, like Sahala, the Sahala snacks. You see them yeah. at gas stations and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah those the are pecans good. and whatever, the cashew yeah. and mandarin or whatever, yep. or orange or the little the little gummies. Oh, shot blocks. Yeah, I like those energy block. This time was I brought uh, a lot of sardines and tuna. Yeah, you know olive oil. So a lot of sardines and cheese and crackers sometimes that's what i'm craving that's what i ate mostly for lunch this week i've never craved a sardine and i love them ever i love them so anyway um we could keep going on but i think that kind of hits kind of the highlights of yeah. of the pieces of gear that you know you get out there and you're like man this is this is great we could talk about optics and spotters and yeah all kinds of stuff but um i pl i play with it all yeah um, before we go, any, any last, uh, any la last words of wisdom you want to impart the audience with? <laughs> don't, don't enter, don't enter into, uh, pacts that you, uh, that you're gonna, that, that, that you're gonna lose on. 
you know, you know from the outset you're going to lose. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just get out there and push yourself. Yeah. Go go do something. You know, you don't have to you, you 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 don't have to, you don't have to get yourself ready to to go run a ultra, you know, or anything or even or even go you know, you don't have to get yourself ready to go backpack 10 miles, but man, get out get out and and uh just do something. Yeah, I mean, I think that you you're talking I said this in a post the other day on Instagram. A life of ease is toxic for the soul. Yeah. I think we, as human beings, need to do hard things. Yep. I talk to my kids about that a lot with, with instant gratification and, you know, and, and things like that. And, and uh, you know, if, 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 if it's instant gratification, it's usually not good. Yeah. And, and the, the very thing your body and your mind is screaming, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this. And yet, there's something about doing it that that the, 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 your psyche and your body just seem to thrive on Yeah. after you're done. It's like in the moment. And then when you're done, it gives you, it gives you confidence. It gives you uh, health. It gives you gratitude. Yep. You know, you're so thankful for the hot bath and the, just, just a temperature controlled room, you know? Yeah. And I think, um, it gives you a good perspective on, on life too. Cause you know what, what it's like when, when all you, when you're struggling to find water, heat and, and food, yeah. it's like, those are your three primary objectives each day while you're still yeah. trying to hunt at the same time. But man, it, character builder, man, be, you know, putting yourself in a situation where you got to do that and you got to figure that out. It's, you know, those are experiences good or bad. I mean, You'll always remember them. Yeah, yeah. You don't remember the roller coaster no. ride. Put yourself, put yourself in a tough spot. I mean, you know, th- thinking back, you know, all the things I remember growing up in Boy Scouts and everything else. It was always those miserable nights that I reflect on and and use those to push me. Yeah, that's what I mean. I think a li- like I said, a life of ease is toxic for the yeah. soul. When things are too easy, when you never push yourself, when you never do hard things you become a very often self-centered, selfish, weak, um, shallow individual. Yeah. There's something about uh, doing these things that builds character and depth and virtue in a person that you can't get without it. Yeah. You know, hard work is what the human, what human beings need. There's, 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 meaning yeah in in hard work so get out there and work hard folks thanks for tuning into the podcast and as always stay gritty